Psalms 50, 22 says, Repent, all of you who forget, forget me, or I will tear you apart, and no one will help you. Torah Life Ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Hello, everybody. I want to give a message right now that a lot of people uh, will not have ears to hear. Uh, but it's my prayer that as I give this message, the scales will be lifted from your eyes and your heart will be open to receive this important message. Because it's uh, critical when you get to the ending of this message why it's so important, you'll see. Uh, the message is really comes down to the question of, uh, is our Creator's love conditional? So that's what we have to ask ourselves. Uh, we know that our Creator unconditionally has given us uh, the this, this salvation of Yeshua and our Messiah died for us so we can have a second chance at life. We understand that. So that was unconditional because we did not even deserve it and there's nothing we could ever do to deserve what he's done for us. But now that he's done that for us, is his love conditional? Do we have to give him something back? Well, we're going to look at that today and we're going to see what the answer is. And we're going to understand how patient our wonderful Creator is with us while we're trying to uh, work these conditions out. The first thing we got to look at and understand is something that I think we can all agree on. The standard of our viewpoint, or well not ours, but the world's viewpoint of our Creator has dropped tremendously in today's world. Uh, most people do not take the importance of our Creator and what He's done for us like they used to. As a whole, there are some people still that strongly desire that, but for the most part, most people don't. It's not as much as it used to. And what it comes down to, folks, and the reason I believe this is true, that most people do not believe that, is because this idea that so many people are promoting today that really don't have good knowledge of the scriptures if you believe this, and that is that our Creator loves everyone. Regardless of who they are, how they are, that He loves everyone. And if you go off that premise, there's no reason to fear Him. You know, so we have to think about that. Why should we fear our Creator if He loves everyone, no matter who they are, or no matter what they're doing? So that's why the standard of our Creator has dropped today. Proverbs is another word for wisdom. And in the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 16, verse 6, it says, Iniquity is covered by mercy and truth, and the fear of Yahweh, man turn aside from evil. So in the fear of our wonderful Creator, it's where men turn aside from evil. You know, the problem today is, folks, people love their sin more than they love our Creator. They love their, their fleshly desires more than the instruction guide of our Creator, and that is leading them astray. So, uh, you know, and I ask you to think about this. If you believe our Creator loves everyone, why do we suffer? Well, uh, the Scriptures give a good answer of why we suffer. It says, the earth suffers for the sins of its people. So, so, so you've got a tremendous amount of people living against our Creator's instructions that the planet itself is suffering. How much more that each person is suffering on an individual level. Now, before any of you that are listening to this message claim legalism or refuse to hear this message, there, there's basically uh, one thing I want you to get from today's message that we need to understand. And uh, we do not follow our Creator's instructions to be saved. We should desire to follow His guidelines and instructions because we are saved. So I hope you get this out. Now, uh, I want to give you a scripture now to see how our Creator gave His Son, Yeshua, the Messiah, to die for sinners so they can have life, a second chance. But it's up to us. It's our choice. In Ezekiel 33.11, Ezekiel 33.11 says, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to turn from their evil ways so they can have life. You know, so by him saying he takes no pleasure in the death of wicked people is essentially saying wicked people will die. And we're talking here about a spiritual death. We're talking here about dying before your time because the scriptures are clear on saying the wicked shall die before their time. On every level, we're talking about death. 
for not following our Creator's guidelines and instructions? Are you following His ways? Do you even know what His ways are? Well, I'm sad to say most people out there do not follow His ways, and most of them don't even know what they are. They are deceived. They have rejected the message of our Creator. Many of them that once knew it have forgotten the message. Let's break it down from the beginning here. What does the fear of our Creator mean? If we look at Job 28, 28, it says, And to man he said, See the fear of Yahweh, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. You cannot walk upright unless you fear a wonderful Creator. That's, that's the facts, folks. The fear of our Creator, that equals wisdom, according to the Scriptures. And departure from evil, that's understanding according to our, our, our Creator and His Word. Now, knowledge, there's no definition of knowledge, but when we look at it in the scriptures, but when we look at the definition of knowledge, and that's really being familiar with something, becoming familiar with something. So that's the knowledge. So now we have the, the wisdom, we have the understanding, and then we have the knowledge, and that's all covered. But the scriptures say, my people die for lack of knowledge because they have not become familiar with his word. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people have perished for lack of knowledge. And they're not talking about worldly knowledge. They're talking about the knowledge of the, the Torah, the guidelines and instructions of a creator. That's why they perish. And it goes on to say, because you have rejected the knowledge, I reject you from being priests for me. Since you have forgotten the Torah, the guidelines of your creator, I also forget your children. So this isn't just your life now. This is your, your, your children's lives, your children's children's lives, simply because you have not made yourself familiar with our Creator's guidelines and instructions. The scriptures talk about people dying for their failure to depart from evil. Job 36.12 says, But if they refuse to listen to him, they will be killed by the sword and die for lack of understanding. For lack of understanding, they're not departing from evil. Psalms 119.66 says, I believe in your commands, now teach me good judgment, which is understanding and knowledge. So teach me good judgment, how to depart from evil, and teach me the knowledge how to do so. And I'm going to become familiar with you so you can teach me that. That's the heart we need to have. You have to acquire understanding and knowledge. Isaiah 33, 6 says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and the strength of Yeshua. And the fear of Yahweh, that is man's treasure. We go and look at Daniel 12.10. Daniel 12.10 says, Many shall be purified and cleansed through trials, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. So none of the wicked shall depart from evil, but the wise shall understand. So wise people will depart from evil. And then we look at King Solomon. In, in 1 Kings 3 9 says, uh, Give your servant understanding, an understanding heart to discern between good and evil. That should be the desire for all of us. An understanding heart to desire between good and evil so we can depart from that evil. You know, Psalms 1 says, you know, uh, he takes the light and knows that, that desire not to walk with the unrighteous. And that's, that's the heart we need. So we get back to this idea that God loves everyone, and we think about this. And we think about in John, John 3, 16 and 17, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For our Creator did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Again, he unconditionally did that. We go back to, uh, you know, the whole idea of giving his son to die for sinners. As it says in the scriptures, you know, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. But then we got to look at John, eight, uh, John 3, 18 and 19. It says, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than evil because their deeds were evil. You know, a lot of people tell me, oh, that, you know, Yahweh sees our heart. You know, God sees our heart. That's not a good thing. Our hearts are evil, folks. We shouldn't take pride in that and him seeing our heart. 
You we gotta understand his death gave every single person a chance to repent and turn. But only few answered the call. That's why it says the gate is narrow and only few will get in. Romans 5 8 says, But our Creator demonstrated his own love towards us. That way we were sinners. Yeshua died for us. Again, he unconditionally did that, but now we have conditions. Yeshua came to set the unrighteous free, the unrighteous free, and give them another chance. But when he comes back, folks, he's coming back for the righteous, not for the sinners. He has to do that because it says in, in Psalms, it says that, you know, if he's a righteous judge, he will not depart, he will not, you know, let free the unrighteous. That's what it says. So we got to get this right, folks. In Hebrews 10, 28 and 29, it says, For if he who transgressed the law of Moses died without mercies at the mouth of two or three witnesses, that's in Deuteronomy 17, 6, how much worse punishment do you think will be uh, through, uh, uh, to the one trampling the son of Yahweh and having counted the blood of the covenant as a com as common in which he was sacri uh, sac sacrificed and having insulted the spirit of grace? That's it, folks. I mean, it's bad enough people didn't listen to the word of Moses, but for people to reject the, the word of our creator. And, and you know, we got to think, if somebody killed your only son, would you be happy about that? Well, our creator's not happy about people not listening to somebody who died for us so we can listen and have life. It says in the scriptures clearly that God, our creator, has a holy hatred for us. For sinners who, who reject his message. In Psalms 5, 4 and 5 it says, For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of your uh, iniquity. So, so there's, there's a holy hatred here of our Creator. Psalms eleven five says, Our Creator tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence his soul hates. Folks, we got to understand this because we got to fear, have a fear of our Creator. And we're not going to have fear if we go around thinking He loves everyone regardless what we do. Proverbs 16, 5 says, Everyone who has a proud heart is an abomination to Yahweh. So uh, I pray that you're getting this, like I said, and, and your eyes are being opened here. Uh, and, you know, we got problems today. The problems, we use the words, some words in Scripture so casually that nobody takes them serious anymore. Let's look at the word, you know, sin. You know, we need to fear sin like we fear things like cancer, but we just don't. You know, we hear that, you know, cancer is, you know, an epidemic here and people are getting it, more and more people are getting it, so we do everything to try to stop getting it. And if we know somebody who has it, we pray for them that they would get better. We go there to help them, you know, you know but, but when you hear somebody has a, a contagious disease like Ebola, it's right around the corner, you know, you're going to possibly leave the city because you don't want to catch it. You're certainly not going to start touching people, because that's the way it's contagious. But when you hear sins right around the corner, what do we do? We just treat it like a normal thing, like it's nothing special. Because uh, it, it, we're not taking these words serious anymore. The two words we use too casually today, well, the ideas is the sin of man. You know, this is, you're going to die for your sin, folks. We need to take this seriously. And also, the death of our Messiah. You know, we hear he died for us. That's a serious thing. He died for us. You know, when it comes to sin, you know, I think about somebody that has cancer. They're willing to cut off their arm, cut off their leg, cut, off, cut out a body part. You know, they'll do anything to get rid of the cancer. But with the sin, the scriptures say, you know, if, you, if, you, uh, if your hand costs you the symbol, cut it, uh, it's the sin, cut it off. If your foot costs you the sin, cut it off. If your eye costs you the sin, cut it out. Now, I'm not recommending we go doing this as a first resort. You know, but I'm telling you, we need to treat sin like we treat cancer so seriously that we're willing to cut off a body part so it's not in our life. And people are just not doing that. And then we look at the words, the idea that He died for us. Our Creator died for us. We need to take that seriously. The whole idea of dying for us. You know, if we know somebody who died that was close to us, we think about them every day. And when we think about them, we cry and we, we, we miss them so much. But how many of us have those same emotions when we think that our Creator died for us? We can't disconnect, disconnect ourselves any longer like we've been doing. We have to have stronger emotions than if one of our loved ones dies. Not less. 
But that just shows, you know, our fear of our Creator is, is not there the way it should be. We have to think about this. According to the Bible, it's actually transgression of God's commandments, 1 John 3, 4. That, that is what sin is. Transgressions of His commandments. So we need to, to have that much more of a passion to fulfill and, and, you know, and, and not sin and fulfill the guidelines and instructions. It says in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the duty of every man is to fear God and obey His commandments. That's a, that's a responsibility. The Bible says, says those who love living in their sin are not getting in the kingdom. That's what it says. I mean, if that's not good motivation, I don't know what is. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says that, and then a person is known by their fruit in Matthew 7, 16. So, so we need to get this right, folks, and we need to make sure that the way we're living is in line with his guidelines and instruction. We need to love what he loves and hate what he hates. Wisdom 8.13, which is Proverbs 8.13, says, The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. I hate pride and loftiness and the evil way and a perverse mouth. Ask yourselves, folks, do you love sin or do you hate sin? And then when you come up with that answer, remember James 4.17 says, To know good and not do it. To him it is sin. So if you know it and don't do it, that's almost worse than not knowing it at all. So we need to get that wisdom, have that fear of Yahweh, repent, and turn from our ways. Now somebody will ask, doesn't our Creator forgive everyone for his sins? Well, he did give everyone, forgive everyone for their sins. He did. But then it goes on saying, Hebrews 10.26, For if we are willfully sinning, after receiving the full knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice concerning sins. So, so it's not that clear, folks, that he's given us an excuse to live in sin because of the death of Yeshua. We have to get right with his word. What it really comes down, folks, is this lecture is not about your salvation. It's about the fact that our Creator loved those who love him, and he hates those who love sin. And we want to look at what loving sin is about, because, okay, you could say we're all sinners to a degree, but, but what is love of sin and hate of sin? When we continue to sin and we don't care that our Creator hates that, and we just ignore that fact, and we continue to enjoy our sin more than enjoy His Word, and that is a lover of sin. When we sin and we regret it, when we realize we sin and we have remorse about it, and, and, and we're, we're challenged and we struggle with getting over it, but we do our best and we desire to get over it, when we ask Him in prayer on a daily basis to help us not to sin, and we desire to live according to His path guidelines and instructions, to continuously learn what they are, and walk in His ways, and let His path, that narrow path, be our path, and not the wide path of the world, that's somebody who hates sin. You know, we want to be like that. We don't want to be somebody who loves sin. Jude 4, 15, 14, 15 says, uh, Behold, uh, our Creator comes with 10,000 of His saints, to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them, all of their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So judgment is coming, folks. His judgment is coming. And, and we got to be ready and we got to be right and wait for that. And we got to see that. We got to turn our ways and repent prior to that. When we think about all this and how bad we are and how we sin so often on a regular basis, we have to understand that this message isn't about the hate of our Creator. This message is about the amazing patience that our Creator has with us. Amazing. We look at the people in the Promised Land that were there before uh, the Israelites went in. It was over 400 years that they were living against our Creator's guidelines and instructions. And the people there knew that the Israelites were coming. And they had a chance to, uh, to return, uh, repent and turn their ways. But not only did they not turn, they kept doing what they were doing. And our Creator sent the Israelites in there and says, Don't mingle with them, destroy them. Do not mingle a seed and destroy them. And of all those people, only one turned, only one repented, Rahab. And she was spared. And the rest were wiped out. 400 years, that, uh, over 400 years, that is patience, folks. Our Creator has a tremendous amount of patience, but don't be fooled because time is running out and, and the clock is ticking, folks, and His patience is running out. 
It says there over and over again in the scriptures, how long will they, they reject my prophets? How long will they reject my word? How long will they do this? Psalms 50, 22 says, repent, all of you who forget, forget me, or I will tear you apart and no one will help you. I will tear you apart and no one will help you. And Psalms 50, 23 says, but giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep my path, I reveal to you the salvation of Yahweh. And that is Yeshua Messiah, folks. You have a choice, Pat. You, you have a choice, folks. It says in the scriptures, today I give before you life or death. Choose life so you may live. Don't be like the people in the scriptures because they answered not a word. Choose life. Choose the path of our creator. Choose the guidelines and instructions. And understand, he says in the scriptures, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And he says, my commandments shall not be burdensome. So instead of looking for some idea or excuse or reason why you no longer need to keep the commandments of our Creator, start understanding that, you know, if I truly love Him, I should desire to do what He says to do. You know, and the scriptures say if we do that, He will show us a more excellent way. And we will have the salvation of Yeshua Messiah. All right, everybody? Thank you for listening to this message, and I pray you will make the right choice. And be thankful for the patience of our wonderful Creator, but do something about it. Repent and turn from your ways. Until then, everybody, put your comments and questions below the video. Thank you for checking it out, and shalom, shalom.